Angie Martinez in Real Life Podcast. This episode and conversation is powered by Duce. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi, mama. Oh, Ashanti. <sighs> <laughs> That's how we're going to start the interview. Oh, Ashanti. Oh, Angie. Well, first of all, before we get to anything else today, I have to say, this is our first, this is of all the years I've known you. And done things with you. We've done interviews. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've been at events, Mm -hmm. concerts. This is the first time I saw you in action from beginning to today. (laughs) Where you were trying to fit this interview in, in the middle of a movie shoot. Yes. And in the middle of, uh, what did you have, a show yesterday? Two days, yesterday, two days ago. We are in Canada, everyone. We are in Canada. We are in Canada. Because she is shooting a movie. Yes. And you have to be up at what time? Uh... 4 a.m. pickup? Yeah. And what time is it now? It's 1 a.m. <laughs> and we're just starting. And we're just starting. <laughs> what is that? Like, what is the thing that that moves that drive? Like, mm, what is the It's thing? a combination of knowing where I came from, knowing where I've been, knowing where I'm going, where I want to go, and just being independent and being a woman in this very crazy crazy cutthroat industry Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I feel like you know I've always been a person that kind of hustles and I'm like a workaholic you know and I know what my my potential is and sometimes when um you know you have obstacles you may not be able to reach where you feel like you should be Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to beat myself yeah you know what I mean so I think that's where it comes from yeah but you started in the game young and so when you're a young girl well how old are you 20 19 20 well I had my first record deal when I was 14 Okay, so fourteen. Yeah. But when you was hit, when you had your first, my first success. album came out. My first album came out when I was twenty one. Yes, I was okay. twenty one. So that young in your life, you mm-hmm. experience this big thing. Yeah. That most people at twenty one can't even dream of experiencing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you always then set up your rest of your life chasing that? Are you setting yourself up for like? You know what I'm saying, like. Because how do you, do you t- try to top, are you trying to top that? Always. That, oh, really? Always. You know what is crazy? I'm very proud and content with what I've accomplished in my career. Mm-hmm. But I'm always trying to do more and do better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes people take it as I'm unappreciative. And they're like, yo, you got to slow down and appreciate the moment. And I'm like, I did. And now I want to get a new moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's you know funny. what I'm saying? Like, I appreciate it. Seriously, genuinely, I do. But I'm yeah. always like, okay, now what? What else can I do? What else can we expand with? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Were you always like that? Like, your energy was always like... Yeah. Because that takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot. It's like, okay, we have a show this weekend. Okay, let's do a walkthrough. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my mind is always constantly killing 10 birds with one stone. Do you think that? Because I've been doing a lot of talk about this. I was at a dinner party recently. We were talking about our superpowers. Like, what, what are the things that make you you and make you successful in the world and the unique things that are like... And so for mine, I, th- I always say, like, I think I'm a super empathetic person. Like, mm-hmm. I can kind of put myself in people's shoes, even mm-hmm. bad people sometimes. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I always think our circumstances make us who we are or whatever. Yeah. So that's, like, one of my things. Have you ever thought about that for you? Like, what do you think is the thing that... Because you've had a phenomenal run. The mm-hmm. fact that you're still here, you still look as good as you do, Thank you're still you. on... You still trending topics. We'll get to that coming up in a little bit. But like that type of stamina, that type of and what you've been able to do. Do you ever think about what that is? Like why? You You know what's funny? I was talking to one of my attorneys today and he called me a unicorn Mm. um, because he knows what I've been going through, you know, in the past couple of weeks, couple of months, you know, and even last night, you know, I was on the phone arguing you know, with the team, just about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And when I showed up to set, I knew on my lines, you know, I was on, I had to sing (laughs) today on set, you know, so it's about just living up to your best being and your best highest version of yourself. That's what I feel like. All the time. Yeah. But in reality, we can't do it all the time. You can put forth the best effort you can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just can't. You can try, yeah. you know, but that's the, that's the difference. Try and focus on what it is and get what you can done. Do you ever disappoint yourself? I do. I yeah, do. Yeah, because when I your think, standards are that high. Yeah, I hold myself 
accountable and I hold myself to a very high standard. And does it take you down? Like, does it, like, if you, let's say you put out something and it just doesn't do what in your heart. Yeah, you oh, want. I'm furious. Like, where does that, t- I'm devastated. <laughs> like, sad or angry? Both. Mm. You know, I don't let it last too long. Mm-hmm. And the people around me are like, it's over. Move on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, OK, it hurts for a minute. Keep it moving. Sometimes it's for me. Sometimes certain things like sit in the pit of my stomach. And mm. I'm like, damn, should I have done that? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. And then I'm a Libra, so I'm back and forth. I'm flip flop. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's, that's like a what is there? Is there one thing that you could tell us that? took you down or sat with you that maybe you should have did differently? Do you have like any regrets or any like things that you would? Um, I have regrets. I do. And it's crazy because you're not supposed to have regrets. Mm-hmm. I used to say I don't. Um, but I, I do have regrets. You know, sometimes having faith in people and sometimes um, trusting people. I regret holding certain people to a certain standard and just knowing that, you know, eventually I got let down really bad. Mm. You know what I mean? So I regret sometimes um, having faith in that. In people. Certain people. But how do you then move differently going forward? Like, is there something that you look in people that are like, because sometimes we do make the same mistake over and over again. Absolutely. You separate yourself from that. You learn. Yeah. The growth is in learning. Mm -hmm. Learn from that. If it's your third or fourth or fifth or sixth time making that mistake, at some point you got to learn from it. Yeah. And then you move different. Yeah. You don't go down that path. What can you tell us about um, this whole Murder, Inc. Uh, story that has just been told in the documentary, Urban Jar on Drink Champs? Mm-hmm. You clearly decided not to participate in the doc. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us why? Can you, I mean, no, just I why. mean, I think the world could see why. No, I know, but I mean, knowing that in hindsight and seeing what they did, but I guess you probably knew that from the beginning. Did they reach out? They reached out to you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they definitely mm-hmm. reached out. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot to consume, mm-hmm. you know? For the record, I love Murder, Inc., you know? All the guys, you know, Ja, Chris, B, all, you know, I'm cool with everyone. There's all love. You know, um, it's very unfortunate how Irv decided to handle his documentary. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little sad, you know, to see a grown man conduct himself in that manner. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I feel like the Murder, Inc. legacy is so much bigger and um, we accomplished so much and made like amazing history. And I feel like um, the way that he handled it tarnished and it cheapened the brand. Mm. You know what I mean? And I feel like we all worked so hard. And for you to be that selfish to just throw mud on the name because, you know, you might have got a check or you might have, you know, I feel like that's so selfish and it's so um, degrading, you know? Um, yeah, so. Did you watch it? Um, I watched a little bit of the, I want to say the first episode, and Mm. I watched a little bit of the third. Mm. That's the one you were heavily in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh And I'm sure you've seen at least clips of the Drink Champs interview. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How does that, what's happening on your phone the day that drops? (laughs) Like, what are those messages like? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, you know what the surprising thing, but not surprising thing is? I genuinely got a chance to see how many people love me. I mm-hmm. genuinely got a chance to see like people that I may not talk to every day all day reach out. I, I've seen people defend me. I've seen people that I don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> defend me, you know? And that says a lot. You know what I mean? Um, my phone was going crazy. I mean, <laughs> Texas from exes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, so Texas. it was Texas from exes and everything. And um it was it was really like a bittersweet, you mm-hmm. know, because the one thing is that I it wasn't surprising to me to an extent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I've accepted a long time ago that that's the person that he is. But now the world is seeing, you know. What is that by your definition? When you what say is, the person that he is, like what do you, what is that? Um, to me, like I said, I feel like 
I feel like Irv is like mentally not in a good place. You know, mm-hmm. you see people that have um, narcissistic ways, mm-hmm. you know, you see people that are very um, selfish. You see people that are hurt and in pain. And as a grown woman, I feel like there is a difference between when men are hurt and when women are hurt Mm -hmm. and how we um, carry that hurt and how long we carry that hurt. Yeah, because I got to imagine you've been hurt in this process as well, right? Definitely. I've been hurt a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not intentionally trying to disrespect people and I'm not right. intentionally going out of my way to try and ruin somebody. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that's what he was trying to do? A million percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was torn when I watched it because, you know, I know Earth too and, you know, I probably know him as long as you do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was a it was obnoxious. It was, this much. is take me in your relationship out of the equation. Mm-hmm. I'm just talking about the behavior of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and but also, I, I clearly he was hurt, was hurt mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Clearly he he has his version of the story. Absolutely. Um, but anyway, it's really not about that right now in this moment because he had his say, he had his moment, he chose to do it the way he did. It's mm-hmm. really about how do you feel now because your name was put all over the mm-hmm. internet for mm-hmm. all those days while you were doing what? <laughs> like prepping for this movie you're shooting? Prepping for the movie. Yeah. Doing shows. And you've been so quiet for all these years. I don't know how many interviews that you and I have had. Yes. Where I know damn well what your relationship with, what a lot of people did. Mm Mm-hmm. But you never publicly talked about it. Mm Mm-hmm. And he, for a long time, never publicly talked about it. I mean, he insinuated earlier. Uh Uh-huh. But this was a, this was different. Mm Mm-hmm. The motivation was different. I think when you've, when you've come to um, a realization that you no longer can manipulate or control somebody, you just let go. And then you, you know, you just vomit. And it looks nasty, it smells nasty, and that's a reflection of the person that you are. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, when someone is in pain, they kind of act out of character, you know? And I see a lot of feminine qualities, you know what I mean? And I feel like, um... (laughs) Ashanti. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) You know, it's... But what what do you think that pain is from? Is it something that you think is caused by you? I think a lot of the pain is from um, not wanting to let go, you know? Um... Of a relationship or the times or the control? I feel like the control. That's what I was going to say. I feel like sometimes when a man feels like he's losing control and he can't manipulate and he can't dictate and he can't tell you what to do with your finances and he can't, you know, control, you know, where you go and who you're with. And, you know, I think that gets to a man's ego. So then he turns to bashing and he turns to intimidation and he turns to, you know, try to make you look bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To boost his own ego. You know what I mean? And I feel like um, it's just, it's really sad. It's sad to watch that. Take me back to like young Ashanti. Mm-hmm. How did this even? I mean, what what would is there anything you want to clear up about his version of the story? Because you know, like I said, you never really talked about it, and mm-hmm. the fact that he has so clearly said that there was a relationship there, there was love there. Mm-hmm. He talks about being hurt, seeing Nelly, you and Nelly for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Is do you want to say anything about that, or you want to I just think let that his? Irv definitely has his side and his version, you know. Um, <laughs> I think that sometimes when you know, like, you may think that it's something, and the other person knows that it's not, you know, and you manifest this thing into something big, and it's really not that. And then when that person finally realizes that it's not that it turns them into a completely different person. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like um, Irv has flat out lied about a lot of things. And the crazy thing is like, 
when we were in a good space, a positive space, like pillow talk is a dangerous thing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And there are so many things that like I know and there's so many things that like, you know, and for a long time and probably forever, like I don't, I don't have the desire to expose certain things. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm happy, I'm in a different space, you know? And I feel like, um, you know, I operate at a very different vibration than him. I don't play in the mud, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I let that sit down there and I'm over here. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't need to bring someone down to make myself feel like, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need that. And I feel like, um, again, that control, when you lose the reins and, yeah, well, well, let me, you know what I'm saying? Then it gets into that and let me start making up lies. You know, I hate when he tells the story about, um, oh, Shanti's not loyal and she didn't support during the trial. When clearly you see me at the trial, mm -hmm. clearly you see me on every single newspaper, clearly, you know, um, I was shooting John Tucker Must Die in Canada. Mm -hmm. Ironically, we're in Canada right now. You could actually, I could actually pull up video of you and I doing an interview. Uh huh. Will, we, will you yes. tell that we're story? We're having this same conversation, basically. Yeah. And legally, my contract, I was not allowed to leave the country. Mm -hmm. I left like three, four times. You know, we weren't even speaking at that time, but I left because I was supportive. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just, it's, it's weird. It's it, very it, weird that you, like you, when you know you're lying and you just keep lying, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's where it becomes a little scary and a little mental. Cause it's like, dog, we could see. Them. I believe that there is a, what do you call that? Um, not a caricature. You know, when the, the, the lady paints or does the drawing in court. Mm -hmm. So it's me, Jay, Ja on the first pew. Is it called a pew? I bench. Think so. bench. What <laughs> the first bench. In the row. At the, the court. row. The, the row. seats. The seats at the court. I believe it's in like the museum, like the New York Museum or something. But like you that. were disconnecting from wanting to be in that business and in those in that relationship at that point. No? So there was a time, and it's so funny because I think I saw this on Twitter the other day. There was a time that the label as a whole decided to change the name from Murder Inc. to the ink for corporate reasons business mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying partnerships i saw that in the doc as well yeah politically i didn't see that <laughs> right. part but it was everyone kind of agreed you know let's try that you know so to speak so another one of um you know irv's stories is about how oh she didn't want oh, excuse me she didn't want to throw up the m's and she didn't want to be a part she said she didn't want to be a part i don't know if that's exactly what he said but even with that, he couldn't even say Ashanti said she didn't want to be a part of Murder, Inc. Um, it was, he never tells the full story. He never says why. You know what I mean? So why? And it's like, okay, yeah, me and Nelly were dating. Mm -hmm. Irv was salty. Irv would not let me come to the studio to record. Irv was telling everyone not to record with me. Why do I want to stay in that situation? How can I stay in that situation? Mm -hmm. You know what he said to me? What? He said, nah, you want to be with Nelly? Go sign a dirty A&T. We don't want you. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and then. Sign to dirty. Did you right. No. <laughs> you weren't going to go down that road again, no. were you? You know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> and you know, as far as like, throwing up the M's and all of that, it had nothing to do with wanting to, um, or not wanting to be associated. Because for me, it was family. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be up in the crack house uh, making cheesecake and not like a crack house, the studio. Right, <laughs> We're talking right. about the studio right, down right. at on Mercer. You know, I used, they used to be rolling the dice. The, yeah, the I, was, I was in there with the sweats cooking and making cheesecakes and stuff. They rolling dice and smoking. And you know, it was like a family thing. Yeah. So for me, I was just like, like, it's, this is weird. How was that to see your relationship, I mean, through the eyes of Irv? Because he was very detailed about how you made, what was the song that you made supposedly yeah. happy? I'm trying to figure out where, like, what made him even say that? 
Mm. I like, was I there? I'm confused. You don't remember this. You don't, <laughs> I don't remember, remember that this at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember. Oh, where did I write happy? I wrote happy in the parking lot of uh, CW Post College. I was actually on the way to see the Nutcracker with my aunt and my cousins in my 626 Mazda. They called it the six deuce, the red. Wow. <laughs> yes. And I wrote happy in that parking lot at night waiting, I think for my cousin or somebody to show up. Wow. So I, I, as far as the beat goes, I know Irv and Chink did the beat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the story. It was new to you. <laughs> That's yeah. nice to you. Yeah. The memory is a funny thing. Yeah. Two people could have completely... completely di- you yeah. know what my cousin calls that? Dumnesia. <laughs> <laughs> Not dumnesia. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like him telling those stories about you was his way of kind of like validating how much he contributed to your uh, music making. To the mm-hmm. actual, because I feel like, and when I'm watching him and he's spiraling and stuff, when I'm watching him, I, I, I feel like I see somebody who's trying to like. He wants to prove something. Prove uh-huh. his, what he what is due owed to him, and this is why, and going a little extra hard and Absolutely. unnecessary, maybe in, in, in some points. But I felt like he's really trying to prove what he meant to your career. I mean, he uses words like, you know, he made you, mm-hmm. which I hate when anybody says that mm-hmm. about anybody because mm-hmm. only God makes people. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know. What what do you what do you credit him for in terms of See, your that's, career? again, what separates us as human beings. I have always given Irv credit mm-hmm. where credit is due, you know, as far as creating beats and coming up with concepts. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chink, Seven those are the main producers that produced the majority of my records Mm -hmm. and they would come in with a beat or would sprinkle his sprinkle on there you know or give direction or whatever you know we talk about concepts he would say oh write about this or write about and i've always said that okay we'll talk about a concept i'll write the record i'll go and i'll vocal produce myself you know what i'm saying so it again it was very weird to me that he felt like he had to stand on top of the table and beat his chest Look what I did, guys. Because it was like, bro, nobody ever discredited you. Right. So why are you going that deep and that hard? I think also because he's defending why he is entitled to have masters and do all of that. It's probably part to do with it. It's a choice, I feel. Because we haven't spoken in maybe a decade. Really? So not even like text, no nothing, no through job messages. No, no, I'm lying. He texted me. I want to say, I can look. I think I was like 2016 or 17 or something to apologize for talking on radio. Mm. (laughs) And I actually said he would never do it again. Um, So that's probably the last. I got to check Angie and see if that was you. Oh, (laughs) damn. Let me see who, what interview was that? But I think it was like around, Ja had just got out and I think he was on like the, 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 the promo tour for the church movie he did or something. Uh And, um, he was talking reckless and I got a text and I was like, okay, cool. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So this, this sudden surge of animosity, um, I think I think a lot of it came from <laughs> he wanted to get ratings for his documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that um, in my heart, I feel like Irv is just hurt and he doesn't know where to place his hurt and he doesn't know how to channel it as a man. Mm-hmm. And it's sad. You know what I mean? And this whole persona, you know, he's putting on, you know, from what I know and what I've seen, Irv comes from a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. This whole tough gangster that he's, you know, portraying is not, you know. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> you did love him at one point, though, right? I loved BJ. I loved Chris. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm. I love Ja, you know what I mean? Well, he portrays it like it was some big, like a grand love affair. Like it was this like, uh, you know. I feel like um, I definitely had a genuine love for Irv because he 100% helped to change my life. You know, I had some of the most amazing times just writing records, touring, you know, making history, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like having chemistry with somebody to write these records with and, you know, being a, a, a female in, in hip hop and R&B, like it was, it was like a perfect fit, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I'm a girl, but I'm still a tomboy. I was always with the boys. I grew up the only girl on the block, you know what I mean? So it was like a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely, you know, and there was a period of time where he a million percent was a soldier, you know, mm -hmm. make sure foolish is number one everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was was Lior and Julie and Kev and Kaiser. He would fight and, for you. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But don't get it twisted. It wasn't just for Ashanti because he was making a lot of money. Of course. <laughs> of course. Don't be fooled. Of course. <laughs> you know, there was always, you know something for self involved. Yeah, but still, I'm sure as a young artist, young girl, you're experiencing the success, mm -hmm. I'm sure that is appealing. Absolutely. To, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm just trying to get in the head of like young Ashanti in that space, like, I don't know, do you have regret about that? Do you feel like, I don't want to say like you were taken advantage of, yeah. but like, okay, mom <laughs> says he took advantage. But I'm just saying, you were young and, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of conversation about young women and how, Somebody in their life with power, you know. Flexes their power and puts pressure on Yeah, it. do you think that that was attractive to you? Did you feel, like, manipulated? Like, do you feel, like, do you regret it, I guess? This may be also another question. There is some regret because, again, me being the, the gullible Susie or the, the, the naive Nancy, thinking that someone is a good person and they're coming from a genuine place in their heart, you know, Sometimes I regret um, believing in that person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And believing that they really meant what they said. You know? There's nothing I can do about that. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like manipulation played a heavy part into um, me and Irv's situation. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, he would say stuff like, no one wants to record with you. Nobody, you know, nobody really, nobody fucks with you like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, he would say stuff like, you know, we're going to keep it in the family. It's in-house. And on one hand, he would make it feel like family, family, family. And on the other hand, he would tell me nobody even likes you. You know what I'm saying? You're mm -hmm. not going to get beats from nobody. Nobody's going to give you shit. You know what I mean? And um, it was hard because that gullible little mm -hmm. Susie, I why? How come? But they, I don't even know them. Why they don't like me? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And... um growing and becoming a woman and more mature then you start to reflect on on certain things and it's like oh that's what was going on mm. and then when I did start to evolve and get in the studio with certain producers I would hear all the time yo we always reached out we always wanted to fuck with you you know we thought you didn't want to fuck with us and it was like wow mm. you know and it's crazy because me and Ja I think it was the night before he went to jail. We had like a three hour conversation and we both found out so much stuff. And um, from that moment, we, we had become closer than we ever were. Wow. And um, I just feel like sometimes people conquer and divide and keep people separate mm -hmm. to the do what they want those people to do. You know what I mean? Mm. So, um, yeah, I do feel like there was some manipulation. You know, there were, oh, man. Hmm. I mean, I don't even know if I should say this. You know, there, there, there were threats. There, there were threats, you know, me dealing with Nelly. You know, um, there was death threats. 
you know? Wow. I mean, I don't know how serious they were because, you know, again, you try to personify this person that you're really not. But when towards you're saying... You? Not towards me, towards who I was dealing with, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you keep doing that, I'm a... Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So manipulation definitely played a part. Um, power, flexing, mm -hmm. throwing your weight around, you know what I mean? I just wonder when you snapped out of that. Was there a moment where you're like, yeah, this doesn't work for me anymore? Mm. I think for me, there were conversations that we had. And, you know, Irv had said stuff to me like, yo, I don't make mistakes. I'm never wrong. I've never made a mistake. And I, f I think that's when I started to be like, that's dangerous. Because if you really believe that, you're crazy. Mm. When I recorded my last album on Universal, The Declaration, um, I did everything by myself. You know, he took a large percentage and did absolutely nothing. Me and Chris became cool, and Chris was coming to the meetings and, you know, Earth stuff brother. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gotti. Gotti. The other Gotti. Yeah, the good Gotti. <laughs> Is that what you have a good guy and a bad guy? <laughs> but um, at that moment, it became, you know, his feelings were more important than the business. And um, I think that shows true for a lot of his decisions. You know, the downfall of Murder, Inc. His emotions and stuff did not allow him to function and run the label like you know, uh, a functioning strong man would, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so I feel like around then when I went independent and, and realized that, you know, he would, there was no purpose, you know, for, for, for us to do business. That's when I was like, Oh, okay. That's, he's not the person that I thought he was, mm. you know what I mean? It's very contingent, you know? So, um, yeah, that had to be probably after the declaration. But it's so. what's so sad is, again, I think I saw him at a basketball game, him and his son. I want to say this had to be in like a 2017, 16, somewhere in that vicinity. And he came over to me and he hugged me and he was like, yo, what's up? You know, good to see you, whatever. Hey, what's up? How you been? Oh, my God, this is, you know, I think it was JJ, you know, hugged his son and everything. And, um... I felt like, okay, maybe we could be peaceful and cordial. You know what I mean? And then, you know, the, the, the evil texts started coming in, mm. <laughs> you know? And then it's just like, that's when I had to just accept that he was just on a different path than me. Mm. You know what I mean? And I had to kind of like fall back. You know, you could try. Again, I'm very forgiving, you know, I'm a Libra, I'm about peace. I used to text him um, white flag emojis. <laughs> I swear, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I'm random, white flag emoji. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we've accomplished so much. It doesn't make sense for you to have this much hate for me, you mm -hmm. know? Like, I genuinely, in my heart, I believe that Irv wishes death on me. A million percent. Oh, no. A million percent. Really? A million percent. That's horrible. It's crazy. And that's why I feel like accepting that I was once a person that respected him and, you know, had genuine love and, you know, appreciated and, you know, loved the work ethic and, and all the things that we've done. That's where I feel like, wow, so maybe I was wrong. The interesting thing is, though, when you, this is like a, a mixing business and pleasure problem, right? Mm -hmm. So when the when the personal relationship is no longer serving you. But see, let's clear this up. Okay. We're not going to say relationship. We dealt with each other, but having a full, like, was Irv my boyfriend? Was I his girlfriend? Never. Really? Never. So. It, well, it, he was. Was he married? He was still married at the time, right? He was married. That's my point. Irv had several girlfriends, mm. you know? So I'm a little confused by mm. the thought, you know what I'm saying? And the label and the description. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back to your question. The personal relationship. <laughs> well, 
whatever a the personal, personal situation. relationship, personal <laughs> situation. And when you do, when you take that out of the equation, mm -hmm. what does that do to the business relationship? For some people, you move on and you keep doing business and you keep getting money and you keep expanding your brand and you keep being successful. And for other people, you turn bitter. How did it affect your career? Um, I mean, Irv got into a dark place. Like, he was blocking a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, <laughs> he, I mean, Irv was like telling DJs, don't play the record. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. Again, we already he never spoke. called me and said that to me, just full <laughs> disclosure. But he, but that's something you know he did uh -huh. factual. Mm -hmm. And okay. I, and and um, again, we we already spoke about him not allowing me to come to the studio. You know, um, he was just telling people don't work with me. He was telling people, you know, I remember when um, he told my stylist at the time, Rosie who was, they've known each other way before we did. He, she was his assistant before I ever was signed or came around. So they had known each other for a really long time. And he kind of was like, if you, if you fuck with a shine, so you don't fuck with me. And that's what he told every single person mm. on the label, in the building. If you talk to Ashanti, if you go to Ashanti's birthday, if you support her in any way, it's fuck you. So that was like really weird for me. Did that scare you in any way in terms of like your future? Are you worried about your career at that point? You know, it was scary. Mm -hmm. I will admit it. It was scary because I understood that he had power and I understood how the world viewed us together as a whole. Mm -hmm. Murder Inc. You know what I'm saying? With Irv being the head of the label and, you know, providing all of these amazing opportunities, um, you know, when a person gets in that position to flex their power, it does become scary. And it's like, okay, so if I don't agree with this and I don't like this and I feel like I'm being forced and manipulated, what do I do? Mm -hmm. How do I handle that? I still got bills. I take care of my entire family. I take care of a whole lot of people. What do I do? Mm. You know what I mean? So it's, it's very scary. It's very scary. It, you didn't let it make you want to stay that fear i stayed for a while mm. you know because you know when someone is consistently saying to you you ain't shit fuck you you're not even fucking fucking loyal you know i made you i did i made the world want to fuck you you know what i'm saying um he would say you know <laughs> He would say, um, you know, niggas want to fuck you because I made you look like that. I made, I made you fuckable. In those exact words. Wow. So sometimes, you know, and like I'm strong, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Again, like I grew up with boys, you know, I was always the only female, but I was a tomboy. I had mm -hmm. a dirt bike, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you yeah. know, um, I was strong. I, I still am very strong. But yeah. sometimes it would make me think about things like, oh, damn. Did he? You know? And then I would yeah. have to snap out of it, you know, because I started to trust my team more and, and get a team and build a team of people around me that were talking to me and explaining certain things and strengthening my battery mm -hmm. and sharpening my sight and my tools and you know <laughs> like Irv wanted his accountant to be my accountant you know mm. he wanted um he wanted to control all my finances you know he wanted me to invest in <laughs> what was it Irvin Jeffries you know what I'm saying um and I was like, well, why? It don't say my name. <laughs> it says Irvin Jeffrey, motherfucker. <laughs> so You can um, laugh now. Now I can laugh, yeah. you know? But when you think about it in hindsight, it, it is hurtful because yeah. this is a person that you trusted and that you thought really had your best interest. I got to imagine that you were a 
huge, you had huge records. You were a big artist. I gotta imagine people were swarming when you became kind of a free agent, <laughs> right? Is, did that happen at that time um, or were you not free? Like, I don't really know the business, uh, like what was happening, but I would imagine there were people who wanted to sign you, people wanted to produce for you. There and- was, I went in the studio with Dr. Dre and um, it was like a really dope moment. And I went and I played records for him and um, he was very impressed. And I was just, you know, I was trying to act like I wasn't nervous, you know. And um, this is the first time you're out of, uh-huh. you're with somebody else out of the squad, right? Yes, right. Mm-hmm. yes. Not and just, and not just somebody. Not just by the somebody, way. <laughs> right? I'm talking about Dr. Dre. Me and Dre were talking about a deal, and when I was talking to Irv about it, he had said something like, "Well, I want ninety percent of anything you make, like for the rest of your life." You know, like something crazy, but he was serious, you know, and I was just like, but I don't understand. You don't want me around. You told me to get the fuck away from Murder, Inc. I get the fuck away from Murder, Inc. I go and try to get a situation and then you tell me, well, no, because then I want this and this and this forever. Okay, now what? (laughs) Now what am I supposed to do? You know, and then. um, What did you do? I got to a point where. I said, you know what? I'm going to stop the music for a minute and I'm going to go to Broadway. And I did The Wiz. Mm. And I was Dorothy in The Wiz. And that was a completely different, um, a completely different layer and avenue and opportunity and just opening Mm -hmm. to my career, you know? And it was something that it forced me to take my mind off of what was going on. You know, you got eight shows a week. Two matinees on Wednesday, two on Saturday. (laughs) You know, all those lines. And it's not an Ashanti concert. It's an ensemble. So it's not like it's my fans coming. I have to be on point, you know. Um, So that was a, a, I don't want to call it a distraction, but it was, it it took a lot out of me. Mm. And I focused solely on that. And um, that's why I kind of like dipped off from the music for a while. Because it was just so, it was so negative and it was just so vile, you know. Um, and I just, it, it wasn't good for my spirit, you know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to be around it. And that's what I did. Wow. And then how do you even, man, there's so much, Ashanti. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be just talking and you're going to be, it's going to be your call time. Go right to set. <laughs> you're going to have to go <laughs> Makeup right is to done. set. <laughs> Because my done. God, because my God, I just, I, I guess I'm wondering like all the things of somebody telling you, you ain't shit without me. I made mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Make another one. Where's she at? <laughs> so you don't believe that you don't believe he made you. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here. What I believe is that, and see, this is the thing. I'm not mad or hurt. I can say, yo, we were dope in the studio together. Our chemistry was like unmatched. Mm -hmm. It was so dope. So I know that and I respect that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I'm not tearing him down. I'm not trying to tear him. I'm not discrediting him. You know what I'm saying? And I don't take nothing away from everything that he no. put in. But you didn't make me. You helped make me great. You pushed me. I will always give him that. You know, I was writing battling rappers. I'm the only R&B female on the label. He would do stuff like give all of us a beat and be like, yeah, whoever writes the, the best shit to it gets the beat. Huh? I was here first. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he pushed me. And I will, you know, I I, I respected that. And I'm grateful. You know, Irv, he was very harsh. Sometimes if I wrote something, you know, he would be like, man, that shit is bullshit. I don't like it. Do it over. You know? And on one hand, it's good because it it makes you be your best. And on the other hand, it's just like, damn, you got to be that hard. Right. <laughs> you know? You know what's so funny? When I was watching him on Drink, and listen, we came up 
similar in terms of like being around a lot of dudes. Mm-hmm. I could definitely be in a room full of guys and they talk crazy, mm-hmm. but you're so used to it exactly. and you can almost engage. I play, you know, I play Monopoly with Herb where he's talking shit and we're screaming at each other. Mm-hmm. I have guy friends like you have guy friends, mm-hmm. but something as I get older, sometimes it's a line. It's, a, it's like a fine line between how you talk. I don't know. For me, that's just mm-hmm. me personally. Mm-hmm. I have sh- I have changed a little bit. Like things that I tolerated when I was young, just because I was comfortable in the room. Right. You talk shit. You call. You say something to me. I'm gonna say something back to you. That's how I was. That's how I survived. That's right. how I came up. I mm-hmm. was around dudes all the time. So they were like, "Bitch," and I'd be like, "Fuck you, you." You know, like right. I, I would just get in there and play dirty a with you. Million percent. But at a certain point, you go. You know what? Don't fucking talk to me like that. A million percent. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to like buckle up in a way. And mm-hmm. I wonder for you. Because you were around a lot of those, a lot of the same mm-hmm. type, right? Dudes mm-hmm. that talk crazy. crazy. Yeah. But we're used to it. Mm-hmm. The, at some point, did that, I don't know, did something switch for you there? Um, Because it's one thing, I don't know. It's hard because it's different when you care. When you don't care, it's like. Right. You know? Yeah, I guess. Fuck you. Okay, fuck you too, you fat bitch ass motherfucker. Now what? Oh, is that how you really feel? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's what she's. You know, or it, fuck, fuck you. No, I don't want to fuck you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? No, right. thanks. No. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, so I it's get like. That. Is there anything else you want to clear up about the doc? Because it wasn't just that. It was like, I don't know. Is there anything that was said about you that you feel was unfair or is there any that embarrassed you about it? Um, or you know what was crazy to me? I'm trying to understand why Earth thought that it was good or cool to put on national television on BET. Ashanti got a fat ass, and I'm sitting there looking at her ass, and she got these little sweatpants on. Why do you think that's cool? Hmm. With everything that's going on with women, with like gender equality, with women being taken advantage of. You think it's like tone deaf. (laughs) Yeah. My guy, you just leaped out the building. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Why nobody's saying that to you? I read an article about, it was somebody who like wrote wrote an article about the uh, Drink Champs interview. I wish I should pull up her name because it was a dope story. But she was saying two things that I thought was interesting. One, it's like, you know, when women just say women are entitled to say no, Uh even on, you know, big, real big level, scary levels. But also I'm like, yeah, no, this doesn't work for me anymore. Right. And they shouldn't be attacked for that. A million at any point, which I found really interesting. But also in the article, she was saying how, um, it was really hard to watch nobody, like everybody laughing like it was okay how they were talking about you on that. How did you feel about that? Because there has been conversation, we know, you know, Joe, Fat Joe put, Mm -hmm. um, had some comments about how he felt about how Herb was talking. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of like chat about how maybe Josh should have handled it. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a conversation with Ja, mm -hmm. you know? And it's funny because me and Ja, had a conversation about this interview months ago. You know, he told me. And um, when I saw it, first of all, I heard that it got edited 16 times. So what we saw was probably the light version of what really happened. Wow. Yeah. And to be honest, I think John told me that. Mm. (laughs) You know, so... um, um, Wait, what were you saying? You said you talked to him about it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I talked to Ja about the interview. And I was like, yo, you know, you should have said a little more, you Mm -hmm. know? And he's like, but Bonnie, I'm Switzerland. But Ja, when you see somebody doing wrong, and then he gave me a good example, you know? He's like, yo, yo, I love both y'all. Y'all my brothers and sisters. You know, you see your brothers and sisters fight. You got to stay out of it. Yeah, but if your brother calls and blows your sister's head off with a fucking nine millimeter, you're just going to stand there? Mm. You know what I mean? So 
I love that you could like have that conversation like honestly and yeah. it sounds like healthy we absolutely healthy we spoke way. about it and he he I feel like he did defend me I feel like he didn't defend me enough mm -hmm. you know I feel like <laughs> but this is the thing too like that's who Irv is we're all used to that so it's not really anything different it's different maybe for the world to see, mm -hmm. but like everyone's kind of used to him being like that. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when it's like clothes in the studio talking shit mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But it's another thing when it's like. When you have a platform and you are publicly going out of your way to disrespect me, to lie on me, to try and paint a picture of me that is so false. <sighs> That's why I keep saying it's a mental thing, mm -hmm. you know? And it's not even to be funny, you know? It's like, I feel like he needs help mm -hmm. because nobody in their right mind is gonna think that that's okay. Now, I get that there's motivation, right? There's also alcohol and lots and lots of weed. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. But I don't know that if, I don't know if it would have made any difference. Right. I don't know if it would have made any difference. <laughs> it would have made any difference. There's a right. little bit of different motivation, right? I feel like Irv wanted he he thought that he could single handedly make the whole entire world hate me and wanna watch his documentary. So he did a lot of this, what I feel. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of this for ratings. Mm -hmm. I don't think he anticipated the shit backfiring on him. Mm -hmm and turned everyone off, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what makes me sad because I feel like we, as a, a, a label, as a brand, as, as the staple in music, I feel like we as Murder Inc. deserved such a better story. You know, mm -hmm. why didn't you talk about how we made Foolish? Why didn't you talk about when, you know, we went down and to Puff's office and got the Biggie verse? Why didn't you, you know what I mean? Why mm -hmm. didn't you talk about how I had to write the the bridge for Ain't It Funny on, on Skytel and send it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why not talk about all of the positive things that we created and, you know, the billboard charts and the award? Like, why not talk about even... The, the blood, sweat, and tears that went into naming the album and how excited everyone was. And, you know, you chose to go down a path of trying to paint this horrible picture of Ashanti for what? What are you really gaining out of that? You think that people are going to watch a documentary because you're trying to shit on me? When you're watching the documentary, there's a couple things that I'm curious if you have anything to say about. Just number one... And especially in the comments, it was like him being married at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any regret about that? You know, the crazy thing is um, when we had a conversation, you know, Irv was like, I haven't, I've been separated for years. I live by myself in an apartment. Irv had like a lot of females, like mm -hmm. a lot, a and lot of them. That. Yeah, a lot of, yo, he used to give me his phones. I guess, I'm even gonna get back to that. But he had a lot of females. So to me, I, I didn't know he was married for a long time, mm -hmm. you know? And then when situations, you know, grew into situations or whatever, he would always just be like, yo, I've been single for a long time. You know what I'm saying? It's on paper, but we both, we're legally separated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I also felt like there was a lot of pressure. Like, okay, so if I say, mm, does that mean we're not, we're not going to record? You know what I mean? So it became a lot, a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically being like, yo, I, I don't want to, this is too much for me. Like, yo, you're married. I don't want to, I don't want to go down that path. Mm -hmm. And he would just be like, nah, it's you good. We good. I don't, I'm not over there with her. I live over here. You know what I'm saying? I go to see my kids. I live here. That's over. That's I'm separated. That's done. You know? Mm. So it was, it was just a lot. And then 
going back to that gullible Susie, that, you know, naive Nancy, I don't want to hurt no one's feelings. I don't want to hurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, that's just my personality. Is that part of the reason why it was like kept so quiet or were you just private? Um, <laughs> I'm, again, I feel like he painted it a little bit more of a picture. Yeah, than... Understood, understood. You made that point <laughs> You very see what clear. I'm saying? Like, but you've always been very private. Even your relationship with Nelly was like, we had to, like, you, we mm -hmm. had to find out almost when it was over <laughs> how it really was. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, absolutely. You really I've always been, been a, a very private person and, you know, keeping stuff low and to myself. I'm not one of those that has to, again, go and beat my chest. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just not me. The other thing in the doc, too, was that some of the other women, like Vita's, uh, Charlie, mm -hmm. there was like a portrayal of you that you were like the queen bee of, you know, Murder, Inc., mm -hmm. and, and maybe their careers suffered because of the personal relationship and how much attention and mm -hmm. energy he gave you. How mm -hmm. did that, what did you take, what did you make of that? Um, I saw, you know, Vita had made some comments and felt like she had um, shown love and felt like she wasn't getting love back. And that was just very weird to me because it, it, it was never on that time. And we, we barely, I don't think me and Vita had said more than like five sentences to each other. Like ever? For 20 years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, but it was never anything negative, never. You know what I'm saying? You just like didn't cross. I mean, i I feel bad that she felt that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm I'm you know me, Angie. Mm -hmm. I'm a very approachable, you know, they Super used to call friendly. me they used to call me the gummy bear. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm 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 not sure where that came from, but it was always all love on my end. Mm -hmm. And I think I think at the verses, I think she was talking to my mom and I think she asked my mom about managing her, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know. So you were surprised. By yeah. That. I was, yeah, yeah. She was not the only one at Versus. <laughs> Your old friend Nelly was at Versus. <laughs> we talked about this when we came to my radio show and how you said he <laughs> What did you say? I don't remember. <laughs> That must have been a cute moment. It was a cute moment. Well, not cute for you. Cute for us. Oh, man. Cute for us on the outside. Not cute for you. <laughs> um, very unexpected. Yeah. You have a lot of history with Ellie. Take. I know you don't t talk too much about that yeah. relationship, but now knowing, n not by your choice, but now that we know a lot of your business, <laughs> <laughs> your relationship with Irv, I'm just curious. Stop saying I relationship. Mean, the situation. So it's a situation with Earth. <laughs> we know so much that we didn't really know before. I'm curious for you, mm -hmm. like as a woman and everything you experienced and that, how you then, how that transitioned and changed for you. Now you're in a, you were in a new relationship for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did that, some of that carry? Like, did you, do you carry some of that trauma, that baggage that into the next one? Um, or was there growth? A little bit. A little bit. You know, I do know that being a female from New York, again, just having a very savage, like, mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people you can talk to like that, and there are some people you can't. Yeah. He wasn't into it? <laughs> he made it very clear. Early? <laughs> very early. <laughs> That's not going to work over here? It's not going to work over here. <laughs> yeah. Was that shocking for you? A little bit. Because you had come from something yes, else. Yes, and just, it was the norm. You know, you know how we speak. It's the norm. <laughs> it's Over there for, was it yeah. was definitely not the norm. <laughs> mm. Was that did you was you was that good for you? Like I think was it that, was. Mm. I think it was good. You know, you um there's just a level of respect. You know what I mean? And sometimes when you're kind of like getting disrespected so much, it kind of like doesn't feel like you're getting disrespected anymore because like you're used to it. And then when someone from the outside is looking in and they kind of show you like, "Yo, that's not how we talk to each other." Mhm. Mm and then you're like, hmm, you're right, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's called cool. adjusting and growing. Mm -hmm. and that's a tough adjustment, though, sometimes. It's a tough adjustment, yeah. yeah. And then from that relationship to now, are you in a 
I'm just thinking about the trajectory of how you are in relationships and what you've learned. And mm-hmm. uh, what do you want now? What I want now? Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm in an amazing space. You know, my career. I just feel like it's like a a surge. Like I'm here talking about celebrating 20 years of my first album, getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, touring, shooting movies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Putting out new music, putting out new visuals, books, books mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just in such a really dope space. I want to continue to expand and grow my empire. You know, obviously I want to get married. I still want to have kids, you know, and I feel like after I finish with this, the rest of this year, then I'm going to really sit down and, you know, take mm-hmm. the personal stuff seriously. You're going to, like, make some time for that in your life? Really? <laughs> I think I'm going to make some time. <laughs> I keep looking at this ring on your finger. You have two stars. Yeah. Is this symbolic? It's very symbolic. So this is my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame Talk ring. your shit, Ashanti. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, like, super, super special. My mom got this for me. Aww. And it's, like, it's so dope. It has me, like, with a microphone on this side. It has the Hollywood sign, you know, from Beverly Hills on this side. And obviously the star on the pink diamonds. And, um... I don't know. I, it's still surreal for me that really? like I got a star. Is on it really though? Thing. Because so many people were like, she should have been had with that. I mean, you know, too. I'm super humble and I'm I'm very grateful. And I saw people saying that, you mm-hmm. know, and it it definitely um it made me feel really really good. But just growing up, you just never know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. I think my mom manifested it. You know, because the whole story behind it. Her first time to LA, she went to a souvenir store and she bought a star. And she's like, you're going to get a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I'm like, Ma, stop. Come on. You know, I'm like, don't do that. You know? But um, she manifested it. You wow. know, she believed in me. And, um, you know, it, 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 it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It really does. So this is very special. I was going to say, what does it symbolize for you in terms of like, what does that star oh my mean? Gosh. In terms it of- symbolizes the sacrifices, the hard work, you know, the many record deals that um, I lost you know, a lot of the rejection mm-hmm. and overcoming that. You think about it, like my name is like cemented into the ground, like forever, 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 you know, and that's huge. What are you most proud of about your, well, your career and your life in general? Um, I'm really, really proud of the person that I am and how I handle things. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think I've weathered <laughs> a very tumultuous storm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, like we all have, we all have obstacles, and I feel like certain people would not be able to move how I move had they been dealt the hand that I've been dealt. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, I, I really genuinely love that about myself. Not to sound, you know. No, it's okay. But I do. You can be proud of yourself. <laughs> you can be proud you know, of that. Like it's, it. Sometimes it gets a lot, and I, I, I do make it look easy, you mm-hmm. know. And I think that's part of just being professional. That's part of being like a hustler. That's part of being a Mm go-getter you know that's how you stay successful you have to yeah you know what I mean you have to weather the storm absolutely and you have other stuff coming right yes I'm very excited for my official new single called falling for you Mm. which will be available after y'all watch this (laughs) um I'm very excited about the record I wrote it with blue Mm. and um it's just it's it's an Ashanti record with 2022 spice on it you Mm -hmm. know what i mean sonically Mm -hmm. but writing with merit Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um and it's funny because all the teasers that i put on my instagram everybody's like yo what's the name of this i can relate this is what we want from you you know so Mm -hmm. i'm excited about that it's and what is it about is it tell me that is there you want to we want to hold it. We'll hold it. We'll hold it. We don't it. We'll have wait. to hold it, you know? Yeah. Falling for you is basically just saying, I'm not falling for this BS anymore. And it's crazy because it relates to, like, almost all of these situations. Mm-hmm. You know, no more falling for you. Mm. You know, I bet you think that I would never find another, you know? Like, it's, you know, it's real and came from a real place, so... So is this the beginning of, like, new music coming right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I have so many records. Angie, it's ridiculous. I'm going to show you. Let me show you my phone. 
What is <laughs> his proof? Yeah, I don't even. Any, I believe you. No, I want to. I okay, want I you to see, see let this. Me see. Let me see. How many? I'm gonna count them. Okay. Ready? So, so oh, the, no, oh wow. No, wait. Did I see Burna Boy's name in there? Shh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see these? Are but all you're scrolling records. so fast. But okay, but the point is, they're all records. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. What, what are you going to do with all these records? What is the future? I have to put them out. We okay. have to put the records out. Well, what is That's the, the plan? Is there a plan? Yes. The okay. plan is we're going to drop the single. We're going to put out an EP or an album. Me and Blue are working on some stuff. Um, it's just so much music and it's time. You know, it's mm. time. So. What is this chapter called? What is this? Like, what do you see for yourself in this phase? Like, what do you think people are going to... Ashanti 20, because I'm celebrating 20 years. Yeah. Um, this phase is being strong, being vocal, being confident, um, having integrity, not being scared, and um, being okay with I'm at a point where um, I can choose to do what I want to do. Mm. You know? Um I, th I feel like I'm very humble and I feel like I work really, really hard, you know, and I'm just, I'm about just like peace and positive energy, having fun and celebrating life, you know, and being successful. Live your life, boo. You already know it. And you have a book too that people should know about. Yes, I have a How book. How cute is this book? Can we just show the book really quick? For it's so cute. How cute is this book? <laughs> My name is it's a story. My name is a story. How cute is she? I want to squeeze her face. <laughs> you see my eyebrows, though? So cute, <laughs> little baby Ashanti. She didn't know she was going to be in all this mess. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you see Mama Just? <laughs> oh, Mama Just so cute. You know? <laughs> this is but so But I feel sweet. like this is important. It's so funny. The title of the book being called My Name is my a Story. Name is a story. And we're sitting up here talking about my story. <laughs> yeah. My name is definitely a story. Right. You know. For sure. Um, and I think that it's important for kids to feel confident in who they are, what they are. And when you have a unique name like Ashanti, don't be scared or fearful. You know, when the teacher mispronounced your name, correct them and be confident with that and be okay with that. Mm. You know, it's okay that your name is not. Susie or Emily or Sarah or Dan, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay and be okay with that and embrace it and understand that your name is different for a reason mm -hmm. and you can celebrate that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And on the other hand, the kids that do have, you know, common names, accept that, hey, it's okay to have a friend with a different name. Don't laugh at it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I felt like I wanted to do something unique and something meaningful, especially coming out of COVID and so sweet. seeing the kids going through craziness with school. Like I this felt like this was great, really important. What a great little message and gift to give to some little kid who's struggling with. Mm -hmm. They can't Absolutely. say they say my name wrong, mm -hmm. and then everybody in the class. You would be so surprised at so many people when I went to Essence and did the book signing. Mm -hmm. Everyone had a story. My name is this. My name is, you know, and they're like, they never pronounce my name right. This, you know, <laughs> I'm getting this for my daughter. Her daughter, my name, her name is, you know. So it That's was so really, sweet. yeah, it was a genuinely That's amazing so feeling. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got books. We got remixes. <laughs> we got songs coming. Songs we got music coming. We got coming. movies coming. We're up here in Canada. Doing a movie. Shooting a movie. You can't tell me too much about the movie, but... I know some insights. Yes. And I know it's very exciting for you. Yes, it is. And your future is bright, my dear. Thank you. Thank Anything you. you want people to know? Or, I don't know. Um, I want women to be able to feel comfortable and strong, mm -hmm. walk in their purpose. And I don't want women to have to cater or bow down or feel scared in situations mm -hmm. when a man has the power mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's a scary scary time it's a scary feeling it's a scary situation um to be in so I feel like it's important to defend yourself I feel like it's important to create clarity you know and it's it's not important to bash somebody I, that's not my thing you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I, I don't have no um I have nothing to gain 
trying to hurt someone or trying to be vile or disrespectful or degrading. You know what I mean? Um, when I do have kids, I'm going to care about what my kids see and what they, you know, what they take from how I, um, what's the word I'm looking like for? Like you carried yourself? How you... Yeah, how I carry myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if other people think about that. Mm -hmm. And that's where it goes into, you know, you can't be selfish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just said something, and I'm going to end with that, about your purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you know what your purpose is? Have you thought about that? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I think my purpose is to show being an example of being gracious and um, being genuine is very important to show. So for me, I guess my purpose is to continue to spread the message, to keep going and keep grinding and let the success speak for itself. <laughs> Well, you're doing exactly that. <laughs> so you should feel good about it, baby. Thank you. So good to see you. Thank you, you for today. today. I can't wait to see the movie. And you coming <laughs> to the premiere and the screening. I'm and for sure going to be there. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you, Mom. Oh, I can't wait to get next to you.